Well, I'm the last speaker of the last class <laughs> for Inner Renewal Week, so it's been such a joy to be together with everyone throughout all these incredible activities and to feel your the depth of your sincerity and devotion and longing for God, and it's it's just been a joy. I'm sorry we haven't had a chance to personally connect with more of you, but it's we have certainly been connecting in spirit. And um, we had a beautiful pilgrim vow initiation on Thursday evening, 104 new members of the Naya Swami order. But someone wrote me afterwards, I won't use their name, but it was such a beautiful comment this person said after taking the vows. I feel like I've connected with my aspirations of lifetimes by taking this step. And I think that it was such an echo of, I think, what many of us have experienced. Yogananda has a beautiful poem called When I Am Only a Dream. And it begins, When I am only a dream, I will come to you and I will teach you the way to encase him in your bosom, and I will show you the discipline that brings his grace. And that's what I wanted to talk about in this concluding section of our panel this morning on Kriya. The discipline that brings his grace is Kriya Yoga. And Master tells many stories of devotees of other paths who he said, wouldn't you like to learn Kriya Yoga? And they said, oh no, I'm a disciple of Krishna or I'm a Catholic monk. And he tells one story of a, a very evolved Catholic monk who he met in his travels in America. And the man confided in him because he could tell he was a man of God. And he said, you know, for 30 years I've been praying to Jesus and I've given my life totally in renunciation and service and devotion, but I've never had a vision of Jesus. And Master said, won't you let me teach you Kriya Yoga? And finally, by his good karma, the man accepted that he would learn the Kriya Yoga technique. And Master said, you're like a man trapped in a room who's been trying to get, find the way out, and you keep knocking into the walls and bumping up against the ceiling. Let me show you how to come through the door. And so the man accepted the Kriya initiation, and the next morning when Master saw him, he was radiant, and he said, after all these years, after receiving Kriya last night, Christ came to me. This is the discipline that brings his grace and it's not, it's an ancient, ancient discipline. It's referred to throughout all, scriptures of all religions. In the Bhagavad Gita, it says, and we say this every week in the Festival of Light, even a little bit of practice of this inward religion, this inner religion, will free one from dire fears and colossal sufferings. And Swamiji said, this phrase, Master said, this phrase in the Gita is directly referring to Kriya Yoga. Later in the Gita, Krishna is talking and he said, when one, when one offers up the incoming breath into the outgoing breath and the outgoing breath into the incoming breath, this is a, a way to find freedom. Direct reference to Kriya Yoga. Many saints of all traditions talk about this feeling of power and energy rising in the spine. St. Teresa of Avila said that the soul is like a bullet being shot out of the top of the head, talking about the rising of that current of energy and exiting with great power through the higher chakras. And some years, uh, it was about two years ago we went to India, two or three years ago, I can't remember exactly, uh, we went to India to visit Swami Kriyananda, and he had just started writing his commentaries uh, based on Master's interpretation of the Bhagavad Gita, which is the essence, called the essence of the Bhagavad Gita. And it was such a thrilling time 
because Swamiji, who is so gracious and so kind, he has, by the way, he is settled in his house in Pune now. He's living there. It's not done, but he's living there. But he was living at uh, the ashram house in uh, Gorgon outside of uh, New Delhi, where we'll be going, um, leaving a week from today. And uh, Swami had, on the roof of the house, it was flat, as roofs are in India, and there was a little garden, but he had uh, so kindly he had some workers construct a little outdoor porch up on the roof that just, it didn't have walls, it just had screens all around it and some little shades you could pull down at night. And he said, I've made a little room for you in our in my house. And we called it the bird cage because it was like living in a little bird and the birds would come and someday they'd come in and it was uh, wonderful. But it was right next to his office so we could see the light in his office all the time working on the Gita sometimes three o'clock in the morning, sometimes just all night and day he was working on that, and he was so filled with joy. And then he would come in. He didn't know what time it was. He said, oh, listen to what I've just written, listen to what I've just written. And, but one of the things he says in that Gita commentary is based on Master's teachings, uh, because Master is the first one to, in recorded history that explains the Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, as an allegory of the soul's battle against the forces of materialism within ourselves. So it's all symbolic. And, Master, and Swamiji said something in the introduction so interesting. He said, never before in this cycle of ages, of time, has this kind of interpretation been presented because it's based on the concept that matter is not the ultimate reality, but it's energy. And that's the underlying thesis of Master's interpretations of the Gita. And I thought about that a lot, and I thought, wow. If these teachings were given earlier, no one would have understood them. And in the future, they'll probably be in higher yugas, Treta, Satya, they'll be different interpretations of the Gita because it's truth. It's the song of God. And according to man's level of understanding, we can probe into it. So the interpretation that Master has given us of the Gita is for this age. And this technique of Kriya Yoga, based on energy, is the technique of salvation for this age. Think about that and never lose sight of that. Swami Kebalananda, Master Sanskrit tutor, said, Kriya Yoga is the most effective technique for self-realization through self-effort ever given to mankind. But self-realization through self-effort, and in, in higher ages, one just merges with God. No self-effort is needed. But in this age, in this battle that we find ourselves between the forces of light and darkness, of spirituality and materialism within ourselves, self-effort is needed. It's a battle. And so we've been given, in this age, the technique of Kriya Yoga. And this is, as Master said, this is the discipline that brings His grace. Just as that monk that we were talking about with all a lifetime of sincerity couldn't find the door to Christ through this technique that enables us to draw that energy and focus it and so it isn't always oh I want to be a really good person and I'm gonna be nice to people I don't like and you know I'll, I'll fast and I'll do austerities these are all good but they won't get you God the only doorway is to, as our speakers have been talking about, is to withdraw the energy away from the world of the senses and raise it up to the point where we can talk to God. We can't talk to God in the language of our emotions, of our mind, of our ego. It's not a language he speaks. If we want to talk to God, we only can talk with him in the language of the soul. And that's why 
again, the beautiful quote from the Bible that we repeat every week in the Festival of Light. And I, I repeat it to myself often when I'm doing, after I've done Kriya Yoga. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And Master explains these words of Christ. All thy heart, meaning all thy devotion, all thy love, with all thy mind, with thy mental focus. And you can't have that degree of mental focus without empowering those higher chakras with life force. With all thy soul, with the consciousness of a greater reality, I am not this ego. I am the Mississippi River. I am the cosmos. And with all thy strength, strength isn't just what you get by working out at the gym. Here he's talking about strength is the life force that we, by the practice of Kriya Yoga, we get under our conscious control. And we can offer that then to God. And then we speak his language. I remember many years ago when we first went to Italy to help get things going there. And we were trying so hard to learn Italian and not getting very far. And then I remember we went on a little trip. And uh, there was a, went to visit this nice little town in Switzerland, Lugano, where Ramesh is from, actually. He grew up there. It's a very beautiful, picturesque city. And there was a man, people there like, it's a, it's a very cultured place, and people have very nice dogs there. You know, there's not, and everyone's always walking their well-bred dog. And there was a man walking this, I don't know, some very esoteric breed of dog. <laughs> and he was talking to the dog, in, of course, in Italian. And the dog was understanding him. But I couldn't understand him. And I just, it really made me pause. And I thought, what's wrong here? What's wrong with this picture? But he was speaking a language the dog could understand, but I couldn't understand it. Well, if we just pray and pray and pray and say, oh, God, please, I'm so miserable. And, you know, I have two friends living in Ananda now. I have many friends living in Ananda. <laughs> but there are two. And one has gone through a test, but faced it with great courage and energy. The other one is trying their best, but... A lot left to be desired there. And the one who's doing really well just happened to mention, gosh, I, I keep getting letters from Swami. And the other one said, gee, I'm not getting any letters. And I thought, well, what's the surprise there? You know, God speaks to the language of, I, I am wanting you. I loved what Dave said, Dave Arshi, excuse me, don't identify with your tests. So many years ago, someone here was diagnosed with a life-threatening disease, and Swami said, don't identify with it. And no matter what you're going through, I mean, no matter what it is, don't say, I am this. Say, this is happening, but my life is for God. And if we can just realize that Kriya Yoga gives us the ability to summon our forces, to draw our team together and say, come on, boys, we're going to get through this. And you can't do it any other way, no matter how sincere you are. It, we need the techniques that bring his grace. And then that grace will carry us forward. The classes this week have been so inspiring, everyone's. And I was thinking to just sum up Kriya Yoga in terms of things we've talked about. How to embrace Kriya Yoga. How to take it on with a sense of spiritual adventuresomeness. Well, we do this by understanding the gift that it is don't think, oh, golly, here it is again, and they're going to be talking about all the, the esoterica of it. We need to know the technique, that's for sure. But we need to say, as, as Devashi was saying, 
with deep appreciation for the fact that what we have been given in this technique, it is the jet airplane route to God. And then what draws us to Kriya and what holds us back? Master said the secret of effectiveness of effective practice of the technique is one consistency, regular practice. I remember once some years ago, we were going through a very busy time in our life, and I admit with all humility that I was not being consistent with my practice of Kriya. I do it every morning, but by the time the evening came, I was busy and working and then had dinner and then had things to do, and finally it was time to fall into bed, and I just said, okay, well, I'll do my Kriya tomorrow morning, and I wouldn't do it. And this went on, and I was getting into a habit. And then, so I, I didn't tell anybody about it. It wasn't something I was proud of, but it was happening. And then we were spending some time with Swamiji, and he's such a, he's such a divine friend. He didn't say, boy, you're being pretty sloppy in your sadda, aren't you? He didn't say anything critical. He just said, you know, I made a promise to Master I never go to bed without doing at least 24 Kriyas. Sometimes I'm really, really tired, but I still do those 24 Kriyas. Then he just walked out of the room, and he never said another word. (laughs) And I got it, and I said, okay, Master, never again. And I haven't ever missed it. And sometimes it's, you know, you just think, Master, I'm not sure that was Kriya, but there it was. (laughs) But... Nevertheless, just be consistent. If you can be consistent and regular. And then look at, think of your whole life. You're a long distance runner. I will do this in my lifetime. And you know, I, my guru buys that I have known, some of them for 40 years, some for 30, some for 10, some for a couple of weeks. But those that I have seen, and we all came here, we were new, we didn't know what we were doing. We had enthusiasm, we had good qualities, we had very, very, very good karma. But nevertheless, but I have seen those who have made a life commitment to Kriya, they're they're radiant beings of light, and I am honored to be their friends. I am honored to walk this path with them. So just continue on, continue on. Be consistent daily, be consistent monthly, and then say this life. I remember Jaya, one of our great saints who is building Swami, has been building for nearly two years, Swami's house in India. He said, I don't think of myself as an especially important or special person, but early on, in my spiritual life here at Ananda, I made a commitment. I said, God, this life is for you. Maybe future lives, I don't know. But this one is for you, God. And if we can do that, it's, it's not that big of a thing to do. This one's for you, God. And just give it and say whatever the future may hold, this one's for you. And that Beautiful soul, Jaya, I hope he'll be with us this summer so you can share in the radiance of his being. God has taken him, and you can feel it. So consistent daily, consistent regularly for a lifetime, and finally with deep joy, as we were saying. And then the last class we had was talking about the roadmap to enlightenment. And as Dave said, Kriya is our vehicle. It will get us there. We may know, we may have memorized the poem Samadhi. That won't get you there. We may know all of the teachings, but unless we get on that path and practice it with all that we've got, no matter how discouraged we may be, no matter how unworthy we may be, but just keep doing it. And as Master said, those who stay on this path with loyalty and dedication, not just for the sticking it out, but with enthusiasm, when they leave the body, 
I or one of the line of gurus will be there personally to usher them into the kingdom of God.